And to Dan and Raphael, it agreed on an eight-year extension worth $50 million. I also want to apologize if I am pronouncing his name wrong. I couldn't find the exact pronunciation anywhere, so this is how I pronounce it. But if it is wrong, uh, I will correct myself and let you guys know. But Yeah, but going to the deal now, he was one of the young prospects for the Red Sox, kind of the young core that was coming up with this young team. An eight-year deal worth $50 million kind of came out of nowhere, but I think it's kind of on par with the Reds on par with the Red Sox right now. They've done a lot of extensions for young players, Brian Bayo, Rafi Devers, and now uh, Rafael is the newest one. So, uh, you know, you also have some young guys coming up like Marcelo Mayer, Kyle Teal, Roman Anthony. So we'll see if they get extensions as well. But for Rafael, eight years, 50, 50 million. My personal thoughts on the deal are I really like it. I think that getting him at only $50 million over eight years, buying out one year of free agency, I think it's really, really strong, and I think it's a really great job by the Red Sox. I think he has a relatively high ceiling, and the fact that you're getting him for this amount of money is pretty great. Now, I think he has a high ceiling for who he is, and there is a reason he only got $50 million, because he's not a perfect player by any stretch of the imagination. You know, he does have some flaws. I think his hitting tool is something you have to watch going forward. Personally, I believe he has a lot of raw traits. I think he has a lot of tools that can potentially be really good for himself and be really good for this Red Sox team. But there are some question marks, you know, how well is he going to hit and all that. So I think the hitting tool is something to watch going forward. I think that seeing what does happen and seeing how his hitting tool does develop is the biggest thing to see if this contract ends up being a new Scott Kingery or um, becomes really good for you and you buy at a really young player so at a good price so it'll be interesting to watch that but going other than the hit tool you know i think he plays really good defense i think that tool is going to be great right away he plays a lot of different positions as well mainly as an outfielder but i think he can play some midfield as well if i'm not mistaken but he's mainly a center fielder but i think he play all over the diamond if they do need him to he's very he's very athletic has a lot of speed he's great at defense so kind of a twitchy player I think it was. A, I think that getting the Red Sox know he's going to be a big part of that core. He provides a very valuable asset. I think really the big question now is: Does he find a long-term position? I think it should be in center field, but again, we're not sure. And can his hit tool develop to a good amount? I think he could be a slightly above-average hitter in this league. Kind of thinking maybe a 750, 760 OPS guy, or a 105, 110 WRC plus guy, but. You know, I think, do you want more from that is what the Red Sox should ask themselves. I would want more, and I think he can give more because, as I said, I think he has a lot of raw traits. I think he has a lot of great tools. So it's definitely interesting to see if those things will develop over the course of this contract. And I think it's a good job by the Red Sox to lock him down, say to him, you know, you're not going anywhere. You're our guy. You're going to stay here with us, and we're going to make you a long-term part of this core of this team. You're going to be a Red Sox for a long time. You're going to find a home here and you're going to be a guy the fans rely on. So I think it's a really good job by the Red Sox to do that. I think that the extension is really nice and I think the money's really good. So yeah, I think overall it was a really good extension by the Red Sox. I think they're betting on him hitting his potential, hit, uh, get, you know, going really high on that. So yeah, I, overall I think it's a really great job by the Red Sox to get a young player extended and lock him down for the foreseeable future. Now, of course, you've, you've already done this with Brian Bayo, with Rafi Davis, as I said, and I think those were great signings as well. So I really like what the Red Sox are doing. Look, they're not spending money on free agents. Yes, I've given them flack for that. I think everyone in who's a baseball fan has, I think anyone in sports media has, but every single person really, but they're spending money on their own. They're extending these guys, which is still a good sign and just a really good job by them. So yeah, if I'm a Red Sox fan, I'd be in enthused with what uh, with the direction the team is going. And yeah, I think overall, I think that this is a really good signing. I think it provides a new day for the Red Sox and their young team. And uh, yeah, overall, just a really good signing and a really good extension by the Red Sox. I'm always a fan of these young player extensions, and I think Rafael is going to be a really strong player for the Red Sox moving forward and is going to be a big part of this core. And once the Red Sox get competitive, maybe next year or the year after, I think he'll be at the forefront of that. So, uh, yeah, definitely going to be really exciting. Now, the next move I've talked about for the Red Sox is a negative one. So 
kind of go from a major positive to a big negative. You have Trevor Story. Uh, Trevor Story is out for the season now with a fractured arm, I believe it is, placed on the 60-day IL. So he's clearly out for the season. No uh, no ifs and or buts about it. He's out for six months. Not good, I'd say. Um, really not what you want. His contract has not been good at all with the Red Sox. And, yeah, um, do I think this is a big deal for the Red Sox? Not really, to be perfectly honest. Yes, Trevor Story is a big-name player. We all remember those great seasons he had back with Colorado. He's been a really great player in the past, but he's just not that anymore. He isn't that guy. He still has some left in the tank, potentially, yes. But at the same time, you know, he's not that guy anymore. He hasn't hit well for a few seasons now. And I think that, you know, he really... I just, I just think he's not Trevor Story anymore, the great shortstop. I think he's still an okay player, but I think you're looking at this Red Sox team. They have a lot of young players in the middle infield. Marcelo Mayer, who might come up soon. You have Von Grissom, who you acquired from the Braves, who I think could be really good. So I think that looking at the Red Sox, it isn't that big of a deal for Story to get out to be out for the season. His contract has become one of the worst in baseball. He's become a very big negative of a player, and I think with him, you really are just gasping at straws to finally get um, the potential that he, you know, once showed in him. You know, he got off to a strong start with the Red Sox, I think, for a few months, but really came back down to earth and has not been the player they wanted in Boston right now for this course. So, yeah, the contract has been horrible. He's not been a good player. So, as much as the injury does suck because you know you're losing your shortstop, um, you still don't want to lose him and. You, you know, it is definitely a negative. So, yeah, not great, but you have younger players you can fill in. He's not the Trevor Story of old. So, yeah, not uh, not amazing, and um, not much else to say there about him. You know, you don't want him to get injured. You don't want to wish injury on a player anyways. But with where the Red Sox are with their team, already suffering injuries, having veteran players wanting to get younger players involved, you definitely don't want to see – you know, you don't want to see Story injured, but I think it's okay for where the Red Sox are right now and what is going on with their core. So, uh, yeah, just want to talk about the Red Sox news. They're off to a really strong start as well, so that's something to watch, see if uh, they can, you know, be really good. So, yeah, kind of a shorter show today. Sorry about that, but, you know, uh, had to record and not stream. I do apologize, but we'll be back at it tomorrow. Um, we'll be streaming for over a month in a row, I assume, unless something... Uh, strange, unpre unprecedented happens. So, uh, yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for listening, for watching. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll be streaming tomorrow again. Uh, make sure to subscribe, follow us anywhere you can get content and updates. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all that good stuff. And uh, see, you after, uh, see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys, and we'll uh, see you baseball throughout guys tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn ain't that great I don't wanna go